Hi and welcome to the WZ2K videos. In this video we're going to take a look at a skin smoothing technique that I've come across and we're going to take a look at how we can enhance that effect quickly and easily. It's a good starting point for any photograph where you've got normal skin conditions and just smooth it out and give it that nice soft smooth model effect without making it look plastic where you can't see any pores or any sort of blemishes within the skin. So let's start off by taking a look at the actual image. If we zoom into 100% you can see that the skin in this instance isn't particularly bad, there's no real blemishes or marks but we can make it look even better. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the adjustment brush and that'll open up the adjustment brush panel. Now normally you're going to see exposure being set under the effect but in this particular instance we want to click and expand that and you can see we've got a range of additional features. If you're using an earlier version of Lightroom prior to version 3 you may find that some of these are not available to you. You can still create the effects because basically all these presets do are actually set up the exposure, brightness and contrast um, and so on. You could manually create those effects but just for the brevity of this particular video we're going to use one of these preset exposure, I say preset uh, configurations. So we're going to go down and we're going to select soften skin and you can see what that does is it takes the clarity down to minus 100 and it just takes the sharpening up to 25. So what that's going to do is it's going to soften the skin down by using the clarity control but retain some of the detail by using the sharpness control. As you can see all the other options are set to zero and we can just adjust the size of the brush and so on like we normally can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the right hand bracket square bracket just to enlarge the brush and with this I can now start painting directly onto the image. I'm just going to close this down a little bit to the side so we can see what we're doing a bit better and we'll start off with the eye socket and we'll just paint the effect over. Now you're probably going to find that as you do this it's not hugely noticeable especially in this instance because like I say the actual image itself, the skin tones are pretty good, there's not that many blemishes or marks. Now what we can do is if I take the mouse over the little circle that denotes the fact that we're working with the adjustment brush you can see what it does is it pulls up the red mask in much the same way as you'd have the quick mask inside Photoshop. This shows us the areas that we've actually started working with and if we find that we have missed anything out we can go over and adjust until we've got exactly the effect that we want. So I'm just going to go over these areas, I'm going to move over, just adjust as we go, just doing it by eye. I'm leave any detailed areas like around the eye, the hairline, around the nostrils, obviously leaving the lips alone so we retain the detail in there. Adjust the size of the brushes I need to by using the square brackets left and right. I'm just going to go over these areas. Now because we're using such a shallow depth of field, I think this was shot at f2.8, we're getting quite a quick fall off of detail so we're not having to worry too much about around the chin area where it's actually out of focus but around the eyes, around the forehead, the nose, especially in the eye sockets, we can easily adjust this to get just the effect that we want. And if I take my mouse back over the pointer, we can see that we've covered most of the areas. I'm going to take these little marks on the top of the nose, around the hair. Remember, this is all completely non-destructive. So what we can do is we can come back over to the, the mask panel, switch it on and off, and as you can see, surprising how much difference it's actually made. So let's just zoom well, let's just close this down now so we finish working with it. Let's zoom back out. Let's do let's pull the history panel up. Let's take a little look at the before and after. So you can see there's all our, our history states. If we go back to the beginning in the adjustments. So it's quite subtle but it works quite well. But we can take that one stage further. Okay from within the HSL luminance palette. We've got two ways we can work with this. We can adjust the sliders ourselves. We can use the scrub at the right hand side on the numbers to adjust it. 
or alternatively, let's just reset that, we can use the direct selection. So we can adjust this directly within the image. So if I click and activate this, I can go to the image. Let's do that again, sorry. I can go to the image, go within the image, within the tone or the colors that I want to actually affect, click and hold that down. And as you can see, the sliders on the right hand side as I move the mouse. If I move upwards, I'll increase. If I move down, I'll decrease. So let's just undo that. Let's try an area that's actually got more red tones in it. Which is where we want to actually want to take effect. I'm going to adjust manually as well. So I'm just going to increase the red up to around the mid 50s. So let's take a look at the before and after. So if I just turn that off, there's before is after. We've got a quite a nice glow to the image. Now obviously you may want to adjust this more with a particular image. But what you can see is it's actually starting to give quite a nice effect just by targeting the luminous of the channels and we can soften the skin. We're getting a nice glow to, to the image itself and it works quite well. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a look at how we can actually improve the eyes by using a fairly similar method. Okay, so we want to take a look at actually improving the, the whites of the eyes. So let's just close the HSL palette down. We're going to go back and choose the adjustment brush one more time. And where we've got soften skin, we're going to change the effect to iris enhance. And in much the same way as we worked with the skin, we're going to reduce the size of the brush. And we'll start painting over the eye. Don't want to go too much because it's quite an intense effect and we'll do the same to the eye that's almost hidden. If we just turn that on and off, if we take a look at the eye. Makes it much whiter. And finally, we just want to bring some detail back into the lips. So I'm just going to switch this back to exposure. Just move over to where I want to go on the image. Make sure you've got the adjustment brush selected. Reduce the size of the brush. And just paint over the lips. And don't worry if it seems a little bit too much because we haven't actually adjusted anything yet. We're just effectively painting over what we want. What we can do now is we can actually reduce the density of that. Alternatively, we can increase or adjust the exposure. As you can see, it goes a little bit extreme if we take it too far. Let's just take it to about, about half a stop. And we'll just click on close. And let's just zoom back out so we can see the final image. So there we go. That's a quick technique for actually enhancing the skin, bringing back some light to the eyes, and adjusting the actual lips. I hope you found the tutorial useful, and we'd love to see you over at the WZ2K website and forum to leave your feedback. Till next time, take care.